Are aircraft carriers still untouchable? Or has China's DF-21D missile changed the rules at sea? This so-called carrier killer has been tested against mock targets, sparking debates about whether the U.S. Navy can keep its edge. In this video, we'll break down what makes the DF-21D so different and why the next generation of hypersonic missiles could reshape naval strategy forever. The DF-21D is often described as a turning point in naval strategy because it was the first ballistic missile specifically designed to threaten large moving ships at sea. Unlike traditional missiles that require a fixed target, the DF-21D was engineered to home in on something as dynamic as an aircraft carrier group. That's a dramatic leap in capability, and it explains why this system is so closely studied by defense analysts worldwide. The DF-21D traces its origins back to the 1990s with the base model DF-21, which was a medium-range ballistic missile. Over time, Chinese engineers developed specialized variants. The C version was nuclear-capable, while the D variant was tailored for anti-ship roles. This particular variant gave the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force a weapon with a reported range of more than 2,140 kilometers. That distance is enough to keep U.S. carriers well beyond their comfortable operating zones in the Western Pacific. The technical specifications highlight why it's such a challenge. The missile is about 35 feet in length for 0.6 feet in diameter and weighs roughly 32,400 pounds at launch. It carries a payload of around 1,322 pounds and uses a two-stage solid rocket motor. Solid fuel means the missile can be stored and launched with far less preparation time than liquid-fueled rockets. That makes it more reliable and far quicker to deploy in a fast-moving situation. Perhaps the most important feature is its Road Mobile Transporter Erector Launcher, or TL. This allows the DF-21D to be hidden, moved, and fired from multiple locations. The launcher travels horizontally and then shifts into a vertical position when preparing for launch. For hydraulic stabilizers lock it into the ground, creating a stable platform for firing. Once a salvo is fired, the launcher can rapidly relocate, reducing its vulnerability to counterattacks. While the DF-21D raises serious challenges, the U.S. Navy has not been standing still. It has long anticipated these kinds of developments and built multiple layers of protection around its carrier strike groups. At the heart of this defense is the Aegis Combat System, one of the most advanced maritime defense networks in the world. Aegis combines powerful radar with interceptor missiles, close-in weapons, and advanced fire control systems to defend against aircraft, drones, and ballistic missiles. Recent real-world examples underscore its effectiveness. During encounters in the Red Sea, U.S. warships used Aegis to defend against incoming missiles, and drones launched by non-state actors. Although some attacks came dangerously close, the system achieved a strong track record of interceptions. This gave the Navy valuable operational data on how its defensive layers perform under pressure. The main lesson? Interceptors are highly effective, but they can run out quickly during a sustained barrage. That's where the U.S. strategy of distance comes into play. Instead of pushing carriers directly into missile range, the Navy is extending the striking distance of its aircraft. A central piece of this plan is the MQ-25 Stingray, an aerial refueling drone that can take off from carriers and give fighters like the FJ-18 Super Hornet or F-35C Lightning II a longer reach. With in-air refueling, U.S. fighters can fly hundreds of kilometers farther, allowing the carriers themselves to operate outside of DF-21 DS envelope. Other systems play vital roles in this defensive mix. Escorting destroyers and cruisers carry multiple layers of missile interceptors, standard missiles for long-range threats, evolved sea sparrows for medium-range interceptions, and phalanx close-in weapon systems for last-ditch defense. On top of that, aircraft such as the EA, 18G Growler bring electronic warfare capabilities to jam or confuse enemy targeting systems. Together, these defenses create a multi-layered bubble around the strike group. Of course, no system is perfect. A carrier strike group can protect itself against limited missile attacks, but if faced with dozens of incoming projectiles at once, defenses could be stretched thin. 
If the DF-21D wasn't concerning enough, analysts believe the next wave of Chinese anti-ship missiles could present an even greater challenge. Recent reports suggest that China is preparing to unveil a new series of anti-ship missiles designated YJ-15, YJ-17, YJ-19, and YJ-20. These belong to a family known as Ng or Eagle Strike, and they may represent a leap into the hypersonic domain. What sets hypersonic missiles apart is their speed and maneuverability. Traveling at over five times the speed of sound, they are much harder to detect and track than ballistic missiles. Unlike the relatively predictable trajectory of a missile like the DF-21D, hypersonic weapons can adjust course mid-flight, performing evasive maneuvers as they close in on their target. This means even the best interception systems like Aegis may struggle to reliably stop them. The introduction of such missiles would have serious strategic implications. For decades, U.S. carriers have been seen as floating symbols of global reach, able to project power virtually anywhere. If hypersonic anti-ship missiles become operational in large numbers, they could dramatically reduce the freedom of movement of carrier strike groups in contested waters. The result might not be the end of carriers, but it could force navies to rethink how they are used. Defense experts argue that U.S. responses will likely involve diversifying power projection. Submarines, with their stealth and ability to launch cruise missiles, become even more important. Long-range stealth bombers like the B-2 and the upcoming B-21 Raider add another layer of reach that does not depend on carriers. At sea, the Navy may lean more heavily on distributed lethality. Spreading offensive capability across a larger number of ships instead of concentrating it on a handful of carriers. For now, these YJ hypersonic missiles remain in the unveiling stage, and it's not confirmed how advanced their deployment is. But the message is clear. China is not stopping at the DF-21D. It is continuously advancing its missile technology to outpace current defenses. If realized, this could mark a fundamental shift where carriers are no longer the uncontested centerpiece of naval operations. So, what do we take away from all this? The DF-21D showed the world that even the most powerful ships could face real limits in contested regions. It wasn't just another missile. It was a message that the seas are no longer guaranteed safe havens for large fleets. The United States has responded with layered defenses, smart tactics, and extended strike ranges, proving that carriers still matter and can adapt to a changing environment. But the story doesn't end there. With new YJ series hypersonic weapons on the horizon, the challenge is escalating. These faster, more agile missiles could test the very core of modern naval strategy and may push the US and its allies to rethink how they project power at sea. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching and see you next time.